It is time to get back to work on the Fummins build. She's been sitting for a couple weeks while we did a full revamp on the LS Miata, swap into a 6.2 liter fuel system, drive-by-wire, all that stuff. So now we can get back to work on her. So she's been sitting here for two to three weeks now. So I'm really curious if the batteries are still good, they should be out and hook them. Um, but main thing is if the AC is still charged. Uh, if you saw like the last episode, I think it was the last episode, we, we filled the AC system. I built the lines for it because they're kind of conversion lines from the Dodge compressor to the Ford stuff right so uh yeah we're gonna see if we have at least a major leak or not if the ac still works so anyway what we're doing today though is uh getting this thing in the shop we're gonna tear into it and uh start upgrading some stuff we got new headlights tail lights front bumper reverse lights things like that get those on get our trans tune on uh register it and try to street drive it and, and put some miles on it and see how it goes so it should be a really really exciting episode first we got to get her started back up so let's try that See on blast. Right, right up, Bill. Looks so good with all this cooling stuff. The red. I love it. Feels like the AC is starting to get cold. I know it's going to take a second. AC is cold. It's not icy yet. We'll give it a second. We got to really put her through her paces. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. She's getting cold, boys. We still got AC. The fact that it's still cold, I mean, doesn't mean for sure it's got no leaks, but it means it definitely doesn't have some crazy giant leak. So, stoked, let's pull her into the shop. Oh, hold on, I gotta, gotta fold my mirrors in. Oh, you know, no big deal, just fold my mirrors in. It gets me so hot. Sweet, AC's freaking icy, dude. Oh, it gets me so hyped. So freaking hyped, man. Oh, that is so exciting. Just like a swap, you know, like AC is one of those things like low on the priority list, but on a truck like this, it's very high on the priority list. And to get it all working and working nice and cold, like stoked. Like I said, I need to get keys made and key fobs. As you can see, we have a plethora of things to go on the truck. We've got, I think these are my LED fog lights, headlights, tail lights, front bumper. The only thing I didn't order that I want to order is a rear bumper because my rear bumper is pretty trash too. And like the plastics all destroyed, but you can buy one with or without the sensor holes. So these are like the backup sensors and I'm not sure if mine work. And you know, being that this is a newer truck and the whole point is to have all the modern amenities, like I kind of want to keep them if I can. But at the same time, like they're kind of pointless because like if you're backing up, if the backup camera is working, like I can see what I'm backing up to. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still conflicted on that. I need to like test them today, honestly, and just make my decision. But anyway, that'll be one thing that we don't get to. But other than that, we got all the goodies. So I'm going to get all this stuff out of the boxes. Do the old snapperooski. Ah, oh, this terrible one. Hold on. Oh man, dude, what is going on? There we go. So here is what we've got. Sandy, what? What? So, <laughs> here's what we got. LED tail lights. I like the way the LED tails look. Little LED pod fog lights. So these have the brackets to basically just completely replace the factory fog lights with little LED cubes. So super bright, um, but but not too intrusive. I'm not like gonna, the type of guy that's gonna stick light bars all over my truck. Nice projector headlights. They've got a uh, switchback ring, so this is like white as running lights and then when you turn the turn signals on it flashes yellow so these are pretty nice uh hopefully they hold up well they're not like some crazy expensive ones so hopefully the plastic and stuff holds up nice but yeah i'm kind of excited about these they really will kind of transform the look of the front of the truck front bumper front bumper valence steel front bumper rubber piece because that's broken on mine uh, so that's what we've got like i said still need rear bumper but this is the majority of the aesthetic stuff i want to do and replace <laughs> come take a gander there you go, check it out, let me know. Yeah, I know, it smells like China, I get it. I get it. But hey, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? You approve? Just need a yes or no. Okay, cool, thank you. All right, now we just got to uh, install everything. Yeah. I'm gonna do the headlights first. Oh, that's a seven. Probably easier to get to everything with the bumper off. Wow, 
that makes a big freaking difference, dude. Holy cow. Wow, what a difference. I'll shut the hood once you get the other one on. So I do need to get a switchback uh, LED for this center one. I ordered those um, and I ordered them an LED instead of standard. Um, so I have the bad one in there, so that might not even light up, but can we see what they look like? Ooh, look at that snazziness. Wow, that looks good. Let's do the turn signal, see if it works, see if we got it wired up right. Yeah, check it out, dude. It's flashing fast because the other one's not hooked up, but it's working. Sweet, it all works. Like I said, all we gotta do is replace this guy down here. Sweet. I'm gonna throw the other side in and then we'll, we'll see what it looks like with the hood shut. All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, buddy. Gosh, that looks so much better. It is so wild, the difference some headlights will make. It looks like more 2017-ish with the thing. Oh, I'm stoked on that. I can't wait to get the bumper on. Let's do a little side comparison. It's like, what a massive freaking difference, dude. Massive difference. Like I said, I just hope these hold up. Turn them on, let's turn the lights on. See what, see what we got. So sick. Definitely just gotta change those running lights so that they match everything else these guys, but otherwise, man, that looks so pimp. Oh no, one of my cab lights is out. Look at that, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. Freaking headlights, you guys are like, dude, Taylor, come on, bro. It's just freaking headlights, like relax, you know? It's like this is some big thing. I'm just excited, it looks nice. It's one of those things that's just made the truck look really like dilapidated for a long time, so it's nice to have it fixed. All right, I think we'll toss the uh, new tail lights on next. In hindsight, the tail lights really don't look that bad. Um, I just, I don't know, I like LED tail lights. The only thing I'm kind of indifferent on is these are like flipped. I mean, that looks good. Kind of looks like a Dodge, though. There we go. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I like that. I mean, I guess before I put the other one on, I can give you guys a comparison. Right side. Left side. I like it. I dig it. Reverse lights are going to be super bright in that housing. Too, which is nice. Right, I'm gonna throw the other one on. The inner ricer in me digs it. It, it looks worse in the camera. It looks more ricey in the camera. I guess it does look kind of ricey. Whatever, I like it. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, uh, front bumper. That's what's next. The new bumper is essentially bare. We do have the new chin splitter and the new top pad because both of those are messed up on the old bumper. Uh, so we got the old bumper here. We just kind of need to strip out all these brackets and stuff. Take it off, clean it a little bit, then swap it onto the new shiny, not dented bumper. sweep up my mess and uh, get all this hardware together and start installing on the new bumper. I wish I had freaking black spray paint. I ran out of black spray paint and I don't feel like going to the, like stopping work and going to the store to get some, but enough jibber jabbering. Let's get back to work. <laughs> Front bumper is assembled. I've got my new fog lights wired up into the factory harness. I just gotta, you know, clip it in where it goes. And then we gotta throw it on. So not too bad, definitely time consuming just swapping all this stuff over, but I'm really happy with it. I'm definitely glad I went with the nice LED fogs. I think that'll be worth having. Just having LED lights, you know, on the truck, but without them being so intrusive. So anyway, I'm gonna tidy this up and we're gonna try to toss it on the truck. Uh, 
couldn't figure out the fog lights, so I gotta diagnose it more. I don't know what the deal is. I can't wire them off like the auxiliary switch because I have four of them and I'm not using them for anything, which would be kind of nice to be able to turn them on with like the headlights off or maybe with the truck off. Figure that out later, it's not important. But we gotta shut the hood with the bumper and the headlight. Man, what a freaking difference that makes. Like, it's just so crazy. Cause it, it the whole time I had it, it originally, it had the destroyed faded bumper on it. It's got a freaking shiny, not destroyed bumper, sweet freaking LED fog lights that I can't get to turn on, like sick. <laughs> the, the headlights look way better too. I like them a lot better than the stock ones. Overall, very happy with the aesthetic mods. Like I said, still to do semi wheels, uh, rear bumper, and then I'm sure there will be other stuff along the way. Those are the two main things on the to-do list, but I mean, drastic overhaul at the moment. So I'm stoked. Now, time to move back to the mechanical side of things. Get the trans tune on. I got it from DCS. They sent it to me um, that I need to basically work, like make the Ford trans work better with the Cummins. And then we need to drive it around some data log that, etc. I was pulling the truck in and I was like, let me just see if they come on when the truck's running. Boom, they're on. So the truck just has to be running. That still kind of makes me want to wire them to a switch. Uh, just so I can turn them on when the truck's not on, but at least I know it works. It's always nice when uh, a mystery solves itself like that. <laughs> cool, well, that means we're done with this stuff. We put our custom tune on our SET tuner from DCS. So this is the first tune. Basically what we're gonna do is put this tune on the truck itself. So it's kind of funny how this all works. You know, we've got the Cummins ECU running the Cummins engine, interfacing with the Ford, so it think there's a 6.4 running in here. But then we have the Ford ECU, PCM they call it, controlling the Ford Trans. So that's why we need a custom tune because the 6.4 has a different rev range, different power band, different things. We need the Trans to know what to do and when to do it, which can be better matched to the Cummins engine. So anyway, that's why the tune, and what we're gonna do is put the tune on, data log, uh, see how everything goes, how the truck drives, and then I, I'm assuming they can revise the tune. Uh, so, oh, you wanna go ahead and plug it in, Sands? You gotta take it, Sandy. Sandy, here you go. This thing's going a little slower than anticipated. All right, new tune is in. Took a while. I also finally got my uh, fender liner back in. I had it out for chasing this oil leak that, from the turbo. Finally fixed that a while ago. Just hadn't put the uh, fender liner back in, so that's back in. Makes me feel better because there's a lot exposed with that out. is outside. I did discover one of my taillights isn't working, so I think the plug's just backwards because it can go either way. But the one that is working looks good. Yeah, I really got, I think what that noise is coming from the uh, engine bay here is the engine like touching the firewall. So it's like that vibration is transmitted through the sheet metal, making it loud in the cab. Because it's if you listen to the engine bay, there's not hardly much noise at all. A lot less than my other Cummins truck. My old Cummins truck, I should say. That boy seems like it's holding first gear longer now. Before, it would kind of want to shift to second immediately. I gotta fix that. It's driving me crazy. It's like worse now. Alright, so you can see that there's a stud right there touching that bracket. And I think that's acting as like a stethoscope into the cab. So I'm going to try to cut that off. Should have done that before I put the motor in, but you know, things you learn after you've done things. <laughs> Ah, it's gone. Oh, it's gone, guys. I knew it. I knew it had to be that. Because diesels, like, if they make contact, they get so freaking loud. Because, like, when I first started it, it had this noise that sounded like knock or something. And, uh, 
I bought a truck before that had that same noise and it was an injection line uh, touching like another piece of metal. It was like the pulse basically. And that's what it was. And there was another one touching the intake horn. Now this thing's quiet. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, I figured it was that, but it's still exciting to like confirm it. Oh, check this out. Uh, steering wheel AC controls, you know, no big deal. Just just freaking the coolest thing. Nicest freaking newest vehicle I've ever owned. Oh, that is so much better. Do you have a dealer plate? Yeah, but it'd be nice just to like cruise it down the road. Yeah, yeah, that'd be dope. All right, guys. First real drive in this thing. We're gonna hit the road, put my wallet in here in case we get pulled over. We got a tag. Dealer insurance. We're ready to rip. Something's still hitting on the engine bay. You'll hear it every once in a while, but alignment is feels a little wonky, but I mean she's driving. Shifting good, honestly. Oh, we need to daddle on the bits. I don't know how we and it's freaking quiet in here. That is exactly what I wanted. I wanted something that was gonna be nice and quiet inside, like a new vehicle, hardly any diesel platter. Coolant temps, still good. We're not even up to operating temp yet. Guess I gotta get used to driving a dually again. Been a while. turbo <laughs> that is so sick please don't pull out in front of me with your golf cart dude they're driving this thing on the road it's driving good man dude, this is so cool man so cool this thing is super comfy the ac is nice and cold going temp hasn't gone up even 186 Smooth and quiet in here. Yes! I know I said this, but like that's what I was hoping for. That's what I wanted. You know, I want to be cruising at 75, 80 on the highway and not hear freaking diesel clatter and wind noise and all that stuff. Like it is so quiet in here right now. The exhaust is like the right amount of wow. Like you can hear the, the, the engine, but it's not obnoxious by any means. Brakes definitely need to be bled a bit, a bit better. There's just like a dead spot in the pedal. Things are just so slow stock. That was like three quarter throttle. Sorry, you guys have been, probably been blocked this whole time by that tree. Oh, I want to floor it, but I'm like scared. <laughs> like I said, I'm scared. This thing compared to the Miata, I'm just scared. Try to come to a stop. There's no one behind us first. still wasn't Ford, I'm still scared. One thing I do want to do, I want to drive it a little further. I want to go on the main road, but I want to check the trans fluid. I haven't checked it like with the, the engine and the trans hot and running in park. Hey, drive. 
drives nice, man. It's got a little bit of like a bounce to it. I think that's just the stiff suspension unloaded. Yeah, it's crazy what a tune difference is gonna make. That's why the engine tuning is like the last thing, like the last mechanical thing really on the checklist because we weren't able to like download the tune off the ECU, we had trouble with it. And we need that tune to be able to like flash the correct tune in. So anyway, I need to do that. I really need to do that. Uh, Cause stock tune is not gonna cut it for us boys. All right, let's check this trans fluid. All right, check the trans fluid. This is a tiny bit low. But not much. We're gonna do our data log, hit the main road, got our wallet still. There's like a spot where I feel like it hits something and rattles and you can hear it, but other than that it is quiet as a mouse. Something an old person would say. I need to get this seat right. Oh, too much, too much. That almost feels like too much. That is too much. I stop driving, that would help. Oh, I feel. We're going 65 miles an hour down the road. AC is ice cold, seats comfy, but I am so excited to tow my enclosed with this thing. That is so annoying. What are you squeaking about? Definitely feels like slower than you would expect. boost than it should to go 70. Like it is a big truck, but definitely have to sort that out with the engine carry. But I mean, it runs smooth, it's quiet, super quiet in here, besides that. Temps are holding strong, 190, 192. It's been 
cleans the tires. It's definitely got the torque. It's like it almost feels like it's choked out up top or something weird. I don't know how to explain it. Like I said, I mean, I don't expect a big giant dually that weighs 8,000 pounds with a bone stock Cummins to feel fast. I've never, I've never driven one with a stock Cummins either. So, you know, that might, this might just be normal. I'm used to my 1500 Chevy, and I mean, that thing's like honestly a ripper for what it is. But I mean, hey, dude, so far so good. Boost gauge is working with a stick. Temps are holding steady. I'm gonna let it idle here for a minute after driving. Intake air temp 135. That's pretty hot. Need to make that little case or factory case. Battery voltage is good. Pressure, so back pressure we don't have. Pedal position zero. AC still cold. See if the coolant temp goes up. I'm trying to just like, basically what I'm trying to do is simulate real world. Like, if I just start it up, go drive, come back, turn it off. Like, that's not gonna simulate driving it around in the real world. Like, you know, I'm gonna be sitting in stoplights with the AC on. I'm gonna be, you know, towing a trailer up a driveway, stuff like that, you know? Cruising at speed, how that is. So this is a kind of darker hours with all the lights on. It's a mean looking unit, boys. Gotta fix that cab light, I love cab lights. But engine sounds good. So yeah, that is the first drive. Uh, went, honestly, incredibly well. Didn't have any failures, didn't have to get towed back. That's kind of the scary thing with this truck, cause like Ben's truck or my gas truck, you know, they're gonna have a hard time pulling this behemoth, so. Anyway, I'm glad, glad everything worked out well. Glad the truck drove smooth. Glad we got that interior noise fixed. I really thought that I was gonna have to add some sound deadening there or something. And uh, I, you know, half of me thought that, half of me thought that it was just touching because that's kind of more what it sounded like since it was so quiet in the bay. Uh, so glad that's all it was. I'm glad it's super quiet inside now. I, I'm stoked, I'm stoked. Everything's working, everything's solid at the moment. So we gotta really put it through its paces now. I mean, that that's what's next. So we have the rear bumper in, we'll get the rear bumper on, tidy up some more things. I wanna tow my open trailer with my Miata on it, see how that is. If that goes well, I wanna tow the big trailer uh, and just see how that goes, unloaded first. And uh, just kind of work my way up and start really again putting this thing through its paces because the sooner we get it through its paces the sooner we can trust it the sooner we can start taking it on trips i just i don't want to take it on a trip without testing it out first i really don't breaking down with like my big trailer and this truck like would definitely be a nightmare so I, again i want to make sure it's sorted first but hey so far so good oh see you guys for the next one thanks for watching thanks for subscribing goodbye